Hi. So this video is a little bit different. Um, after the really tragic death of Lee McMillan, um, I have been feeling a lot of things and a lot of things that I didn't expect to be feeling when I didn't know her personally and just watched her videos online. It's hit me really deeply and I really want to talk about it. So we're going to talk about depression and mental illness today. If you're new here, my name is Katherine Fisher. Uh, I'm a singer-songwriter and creative, and I also have struggled with mental illness for the most of my life. I can look back at times in my childhood and now see so clearly that I was an anxious child and that I was struggling with anxiety, but at the time I didn't know that. I didn't have the words for that. I didn't know how to describe that and explain that. It just, it was my reality. It was what I knew. So that's just how it was. Um, fast forward a little bit to high school and I started developing OCD and anxiety um, in about grade 10 and I didn't know what that was. I struggled with really bad intrusive thoughts, but I had no idea what that was. Um, I just thought if I prayed enough, it would go away, or if I tried to not think about it, it would go away, or if I achieved things, kept my mind busy, they would go away. They were then increased or exacerbated by a traumatic event that happened in my life towards the end of my grade 10 year, which uh, triggered PTSD and really brought forward my depression and my anxiety and OCD skyrocketed. So for most of grade 11 and 12, so for about two years of really intense mental illness, I struggled by myself. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't know how to communicate it and I think I wanted to fix it on my own. I wanted to be able to figure it out. And I think too, because this would have been like 20, 12 to 2014 when this was happening. So it was still not as talked about as it is now. I remember when I did start talking about it in like 2014-ish, I was one of the first people I knew to be open about my experiences. It's really wild how much has changed since then, but we didn't really talk about it in the world and I did have a very supportive family uh, who talked about mental illness, but it was always just this very distant thing. It didn't seem concrete. And I think that's what I struggled with. Lots of people, to this day, lots of people don't talk about the scary symptoms of having a mental illness and what that is really like in the day to day. It is being really worried about things but it's also really intense to the point where it controls your life. And it does feel like there's no way out. It feels like this is going to be your forever. It feels like there is no way that it could ever change. If this is your brain, how are you ever going to be able to escape it? Those are really real thoughts that I struggled with. I know what it's like to be in a place where it's impossible to go through the day to day. And literally every single moment of your day is overruled by 
horrible thoughts and terrifying thoughts and pain and overthinking why you're thinking those things and feeling unworthy and feeling messed up and broken beyond repair. And when people don't talk about some of the scarier things and scarier symptoms of mental illness, I think it can make you feel even more isolated because it feels like, well, if people aren't talking about these symptoms, then this must not be depression. This must not be anxiety. It must be something worse. And that was my fear too, was that I was just like crazy. And I was going to, my fear was I was going to hurt somebody and that I was going to snap. That was my big fear. I remember one time I literally stayed up through the entire night because I was so convinced that if I went to bed, I would wake up in my sleep and I would hurt my family. So I stayed up and didn't sleep. That's how bad my anxiety, my intrusive thoughts were. I remember so many rituals of Googling things to prove to myself that I wasn't going to hurt anyone, wasn't going to hurt myself, that I wasn't quote unquote crazy. And I was so terrified that because I had been a victim of trauma that I would perpetuate that onto other people because I had heard somewhere that it can be a cycle and so my mind fixated on that thing and was so convinced that that I would become a bad person because it had happened to me which is not the case but those are some of the scary things that your brain will do when you have intrusive thoughts. It will pick the worst, worst things that you can imagine happening and fixate on those things. And for me, it would fixate on me perpetuating those things, which is terrifying. And you're so scared to tell someone about it because you think it makes you a horrible person and that they will judge you and that you will never be able to get better and that your life is ruined. And that was, for me, the hardest part of it. And it really wasn't until I was out of college, I want to say like 2018, um, like f over five years after this all started, that I understood what intrusive thoughts were and understood how that was affecting me in my life and how those really scary things were just a symptom of OCD. Because up until that point, I thought I had generaliz generalized anxiety disorder, which I do have, and depression, but the, those symptoms weren't really talked about um, because I didn't disclose them because I didn't know how to. Um, and my anxiety really focused on my anxiety over those intrusive thoughts. Once I realized what they were and that other people had them and they were just thoughts and talked about that with my therapist, my life changed dramatically and my relationship with my mental illness changed dramatically because for the first time in years, I understood that it wasn't my fault and I wasn't quote unquote crazy and I wasn't going to hurt anybody and wasn't going to hurt myself and that totally changed my life. This isn't to say that I don't still struggle with mental illness. I still have intrusive thoughts. They still suck. And sometimes they're really, really hard and sometimes they do feel overwhelming, but I'm not kidding you when I say from the moment I wake up, I woke up until the moment I went to bed when I was really sick, I was struggling with these thoughts. Like I remember going to school once and I would get up at like what 7:15 for school at 8:15 and I remember getting to my first class and being halfway through that period and having my first intrusive thought and thinking wow it's been 
an hour and a half before I had my first intrusive thought. Like, that was how bad they were, that they, that an hour and a half without one was like this oh my goodness moment. And now my life is so different and I do just let them go and let them um, pass through. And talking about them and hearing other people talk about them really changed that for me, which is why I wanted to make this video and talk about my journey with mental illness and some of the darker parts of it because I think that it is so important to tell people you love them and to tell people you care about them but there's also another layer to that there's the layer of knowing that these symptoms are just symptoms they don't define you that with proper care and support you can get through them and you can continue your journey as the human that you are. You are not just this illness. But part of people being able to do that is political in the fact it is largely affected by people's ability to get help and ability to access care and the stigma that is very, very intense around mental illness and medication. As someone who is on antidepressants and has been for six or seven years at this point, they have changed and saved my life. My life is dramatically different on them. My brain needs that medication. My brain needs serotonin. And that's okay. And I was very lucky that I was able to get those drugs. But lots of people aren't. Lots of people cannot afford them. Even in Canada, lots of people go off of mental health medication because they can't afford it. That's not even mentioning therapy. Therapy is so incredibly expensive. It averages about $100 to $150 per session. So like an hour session. And for those really struggling, we could easily use one session a week, if not more. Like, but we can't afford it. We can't access that support because we don't have the money for it. And I've been lucky that I have been able to access some sliding scale counselors um, and therapists, but most of those services are short term because there are so many people that need access to them. So we really, really need to advocate for policy change and healthcare change. I'm speaking for Ontario and Canada because that's what I know. Uh, and that's where I am, but I know that these stories are very similar across the world. So making sure that we are getting political about these things and voting for change and campaigning to get these things covered by health care because they're so important and having more accessible mental health care. Because there's only so much talking about it and telling people it's okay not to be okay can do when what will help them get better after they've said that they need help isn't accessible to them. And what they need to help them, they can't get because there are barriers and of all kinds, including financial ones. We have to make it more accessible, and that will save lives. This includes things like paid sick days, and more flexible work conditions, and normalizing not working 40 hours a week. Part of what makes my mental health sustainable is not working 40 hours a week. Working 40 hours a week is detrimental to my mental health, and I've tried it so many times, and 
every time my mental health plummets. And I'm working through that internalized guilt and the fact that hustle culture is still so alive and well. There are so many layers to this and there's so much nuance that I can't get to all of it in one video and I know there are things that I'm forgetting and not mentioning, but I hope that this makes you think. And I hope that if you feel called to and you feel safe to, you can share as well. I know that on Instagram, the family and friends of Lee have started the hashtag speak up for Lee, which I did a post about and um, will also be included in this video because I think speaking up matters so much more that we know and when voices come together they really can create change and I really have hoped that they will because I saw so much of myself in Lee and I don't know if that's because she was so vibrant and joyful and had such a big heart or if it's because I could just see my struggles in her. But I really saw myself reflected in her and I hope that the more change we can create with regards to the mental health care systems and the way that society treats it, the more lives that we can save. Thank you for watching this video. I will have crisis links linked below. So if you are in need of support and are in crisis or need a mental health helpline, they will be linked below for you to call. Please reach out if you need help. You matter, your life matters, and it does get better. It does, it does, it does. Sending light and love to all of you.